Do I have a motion for the executive session? I'll move it. Second. second. Motion second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any nays or abstentions? Seeing none, the motion passed. Next item is a motion to adopt the agenda. Do we have any new agenda items or interest? Uh, yeah, so what we want to do is we want to make one change to the agenda tonight. We want to move up resolution 160. I'd like to move that up um, ahead of all the uh, open public information if we could. So on uh, the first item under discussion, move that resolution up? Yes, please. Yeah. Okay. A any objections? If so, I have a motion to adopt the amended agenda. Second. Okay. Motion and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any nays or abstentions? Seeing none, the motion passed. Next item is a motion to acknowledge the minutes of November 9th and November 13, 2023. Do I have a motion? Move. Second. Motion second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any nays or abst abstentions? Seeing none, motion passes. Actually, um, I I'd like to add one, it, talk to the board, uh, perhaps in an executive session, about adding uh, one item to the agenda uh, regarding uh, Downey. Yeah, uh, I would say we're going to move to executive session on anyway. some of these resolutions anyway, yeah. so if we can handle it during that time, it will sure. be helpful. Okay. All right, now, next item will be a motion to open the public portion. Make, make a motion, motion to open the public portion. So a motion and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any nays or abstentions? Seeing none, the motion passes. So now, uh, anybody that would like to have some comments presented uh, to the town board uh, for our consideration, please come on off to the podium, identify yourself, uh, state your name, and uh, uh, we'll let you. We are on the agenda. Is this part of the agenda portion? No, just open. This is open discussion where you can be discussing any part, item that's on the agenda. So we'll list it as a subject matter as an open discussion. That be Correct. Right? Sure. Yeah, you're already on the agenda. You're already on the agenda for a discussion item. Yes. So is that my turn? You, you may. Not yet. Not, not yet. I mean, if somebody else has comments, then yeah. go ahead. <laughs> Good evening. Uh, Marco Peritigos, Booth Boulevard, Wappinger. Um, there's a resolution on the agenda tonight to vote on authorizing the town attorney to sign a stipulation of settlement in the Downey case um, on the town board's behalf. That stipulation was already signed on both the, uh, by both attorneys on September 13th and executed by the judge on September 15th. And it was filed with the Dutchess County Supreme Court clerk on the same day, making it legally binding. I'm also a member of the planning board. We were never presented with this stipulation or gave our consent to signing this in our behalf. Uh, I never saw the stipulation uh, of settlement or agreed to it. I first became aware of it on uh, October 23rd when it was discussed at the town board meeting. You discussed changes at that meeting. I don't see where they were made. Um, and it's already filed and signed, so how can we make changes to that agreement? Since this stipulation of settlement was signed without the knowledge, consent, and approval of any of the planning board members, we would request that the town board direct the attorney to the town to file the necessary documents requesting the judge to vacate the stipulation as it was written. That's all I have. Thank you, Mark. Thank, Thank you, you. Mark. Any other comments? Thank you for the clarification. Good evening, Town Board of Operators. I appreciate your uh, time tonight and your dedication to our community. Before I begin, I'd like to remind you of the Identify old... yourself, please. I'm sorry, Carmine Mortuono. Before I begin tonight, I'd like to remind you of the oath you each took when you were sworn into office. With your right hand raised and your left hand on the Bible, you said the following. I do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States of America and the Constitution of the State of New York. I will faithfully discharge the duties of the office of councilman of the town of Wappinger, according to the best of my abilities, so help me God. I ask you to keep this oath in mind as you listen to the information we're about to provide to you. I and those who follow me are volunteers of New York Citizens Audit, and we are not official spokespersons. We come before you to share some alarming information that is included in our published reports from thousands of hours of research by hundreds of citizens volunteering their time. For an official response to specific questions regarding these findings, I can provide you with a written answer from our volunteer executive team in a timely fashion as possible, and I appreciate your understanding. New York Citizens Order is a 501c3 all-volunteer nonpartisan grassroots group of over 2,000 New York citizens 
from across the entire state. We are regular citizens like yourselves who all came together to pool resources and talents. We're conservatives, Democrats, independents, citizens who have come together to demand accurate and provable elections. Under the Freedom of Information Law, we obtained digital copies of the publicly available New York State Voter Roll Database and the county's voter data for the 2020 and 2022 general elections. The information contained in these reports we have provided to you at last month's uh, Wapenger Town Hall meeting and in emails I sent to each of you on April 12, 2023, is derived from extensive research of the official data from the New York State Board of Elections. The information in the reports are not theory or statistics. These are line-by-line -line extractions from New York State Board of Elections' own data. What makes an election valid? There are three basic valid uh, tenets of a valid election. Voter rolls must be accurate. Votes counted must be from qualified voters. And the number of votes must equal the number of voters who voted. Our election systems are part of our critical national security and are required under federal law to be accurate and provable. The, finding reveals, the findings reveal that there are algorithms embedded within a New York State voter roll database, which appear to be controlling the assignments of voters' ID numbers. Several cyber intelligence experts have agreed that the research we have done was sound. Information pertaining to uh, one of these algorithms has been validated and published in the Journal of Information Warfare. This, blatantly illegal and, this is blatantly illegal and considered a total loss of control data breach by the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Agency, CISA, the federal agency with the duty to protect critical national infrastructure, cyber infrastructure. The New York State Board of Elections publishes official results on their website after every election. It includes a number of votes by race, county, and party. New York Citizens Order received a copy of the voter roll database on December 19, 2022 four days after certification. When we tallied the voters who voted as recorded by New York State Voter Roll Database, we were unable to reconcile their claim. The New York State Board of Elections official results for the 2022 general elections were 5,965,684 votes cast. However, when, compared the, when we compared the data from the New York State Board of Elections official results total to the New York State Voter Roll Database raw data, we found only 5,930,372 voters who voted. This equates to 35,000 more votes than voters who voted. If there was a $35,000 discrepancy in your bank account, would you accept this as a clerical error? No, you wouldn't. You would request an audit. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, board members. Thank you for your time. My name is John Ellsworth. I also am a volunteer for New York Citizens Audit and not an official spokesperson. According to the Help America Vote Act, passed by Congress and signed into law on October 29, 2002, the maximum allowable error rate in a valid certifiable election is stringent. The rate is 1 in 125,000 ballots in error. The allowable bail errors in the 2022 election, general election, were 48. We discovered that in that election there were over 745,000, nearly three quarters of a million apparent voting violations. In the 2020 election, the allowable bail errors were 70, and we discovered there were over 960,000, nearly one million apparent voting violations. Does anyone here think that's acceptable in an election? I don't think so. Both of these general elections have violated federal law and should not have been certified. Certification of these general elections appears to be a federal crime, a civil rights violation acting under the color of law. We are seeking your support of the New York Citizens Audit Resolution for a complete end-to-end -end audit of the New York State 2022 general election for both paper and electronic records, including ballots. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, good evening. 
Good evening. My name is Rhonda Damer. <clears throat> Thank you for your time and your service to our community. I am also a citizen volunteer with New York Citizens Audit, and I'm not an official spokesperson. Our concern is that the state and federal election laws are not being followed and call into question the validity of the results. Are the voter rolls in New York State voter accurate as required by the National Voter Registration Act of 1993? Let's talk about some of our findings. Our research has identified over five million highly questionable registrations that appear to be in violation of election laws. Over five million. Ladies and gentlemen, that represents 25% of all registrations in New York State voter rolls. Over 1.5 million registrations have a purge status, but no purge date. Why does this matter? Well, if there's no purge date, there is no way of knowing if they were eligible to vote in any elections. Over 1.4 million registrations are what appear to be illegal duplicates where an individual may have two or more New York State voter registration IDs. Election laws require the New York State Board of Elections to simply consolidate all county rolls into a singular statewide database assigning each voter one unique state ID number for their entire voting life. One example found by our research team was the same voter with 25 different state voter IDs in multiple counties with registration dates within days of each other. How is this even possible? Here are some other categories of highly irregular, irregular, and questionable registrations. Missing or incomplete addresses, incorrect birth dates, such as voters who are older than the oldest living person in the United States, or who are too young to register or too young to vote. All voters' records should have an active status at some point. However, we discovered that there are 712,000 purged registration records that were never active. There were over 987,000 records with the registration date of January 1st of years ranging from 1900 to 2022. Government offices are closed on New Year's Day because it's a federal holiday. This makes it impossible to register to vote on that date. The Board of Elections says this is a default date thereby admitting that they entered false data into a federally mandated database that is part of our critical national security infrastructure. There were over 625,000 more registrations than there are voting age citizens in just six counties in New York. The most basic database validation software would have prevented these errors. Were these mistakes? If you had a, a group of employees that made that many mistakes, would you accept these poor performance results and keep employing them? We also found the voter rolls that New York State shows for the counties do not match the New York County voter rolls. The state reported 197,000, 195, 1,271 less votes than the counties reported in the 2020 general election. In essence, 195,271 voters have been disenfranchised. Their votes, no one knows what happened to them. Why do we even tolerate this? How is this even possible? There is only one way to find out, and that is an end-to-end -end audit. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we, we please confine your comments to two minutes, and that, then we'll have to cut it short. Okay. Okay. You'll be the last I'll one to talk to. on the topic. Yes. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Liz Seary. Good evening. 
I am also a citizen volunteer with New York Citizens Audit, and I am not an official spokesperson. Some question the validity of this data and our analysis. We wish to remind you that the data is not ours, but from the state and county election officials in New York State. Our data researchers are highly educated professionals with decades of hands-on experience in creating, managing, and maintaining databases. One is a professor in this curriculum at the college level. These researchers have found that the New York State voter database has been breached and that the data is being manipulated by sophisticated and extremely expensive and completely unnecessary mathematical algorithms. The database has been so hopelessly corrupted that to describe it in appropriate legal descriptions, it is no longer secure and there is a total loss of control, making it not suitable in the certification of any election. As stated prior, and as a reminder, the evidence of these algorithms has been triple-blind, peer-reviewed, and published in the Journal of Information Warfare in May of this year by Dr. Andrew Paquet, PhD. Just the fact that these algorithms exist in our database is not only illegal, but they destroy security, fairness, and voter equity. These are considered to be a major breach in federal cybersecurity terms. Quoting Dr. Paquette in his article, they can be covertly used to tag fraudulent, for, can't speak, sorry, I'm trying to talk fast, <laughs> to tag fraudulent records for later use. Fairness and equity are destroyed because these algorithms allow for manipulation of voters' records, which opens the door to inserting invalid votes. We have seen this very thing with over 338,000 more votes cast than voters in 2020. This feat can only be accomplished by assigning invalid votes to these irregular or excess registrations created by whom? Whoever it is has severely breached the New York State voter roll security to implement the algorithms. Who did this? Who paid for it? Why did they put this into use? When did they put this into use? Was it someone on the inside or perhaps a result of external hacking? Or worse, a threat from a foreign nation? We don't know. When it comes to federal elections, the law says there are no honest mistakes. And that's why we need an audit to figure out how these irregularities occurred. But there's more, far too much more to present in a few minute presentation. And for this reason, we have provided you with the summary reports and the detailed reports of our findings from the 22 general election. We implore you to scour through them and understand the scope and impact these findings bring. How can any of these elections or future elections be certified while still using the same compromised voter rolls? As residents and taxpaying citizens of New York, we reach out to you, our elected officials and civil servants, to be our voice in the bureaucratic wilderness and the first, most important step on the rung up the bureaucratic ladder. It's with this in mind that we are requesting your signatures on our re resolution for a complete end-to-end -end audit of the 2022 general election. It will not cost the taxpayers of the county or your budget will, and your budget will not be impacted, but we do need your support. And again, we're only asking your support in our request for an audit of the data. Yes, we are and thank you, you know, very much for your comments. You know, we, you said you submitted the material. Do you have a hard copy that you can submit you know, to us further and deliver it to the town yeah, clerk's office? Yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, so I don't have it. I haven't seen it. Okay. Okay, so if everyone, then we'll take it under consideration and advisement, but I'm sorry, I have to cut it short, but we got, the, you know, we clearly understand the message and the importance and certainly someone myself uh, understanding cybersecurity. Yeah. So uh, uh, we have a long agenda, you know, tonight, yes. but so this, the, the agenda is irrelevant. It'll do something. No, I understood. And we, uh, we, I think we all understand and, and we'll uh, take it under further advisement consideration and then maybe have you come back for some further say, questions. Please, yeah. Yes, understood. Please come back yeah. with any questions thank you. you have. And thank you very much for your okay. time tonight. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. Okay, we'll thank you. Five just, sure. The request is we can come back to be on either an open discussion or on the agenda to ask for your vote to support the resolution for an end-to-end -end audit. That's a simple request. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, nay. Ideally, we want a yay across the board. Um, 
That, that's, that's it. That's okay. all we need to know. Okay, well, we'll take it under advisement okay. consideration. Yeah, we'll thank you. you. Okay, thank you very, thank much. You very much. Thank you for everyone for attending you thank know, you. tonight. Thank you. Okay, the uh, next item is actually we've moved up to the agenda. We have. Okay. Okay, yeah, come on. Sure, Ken. I didn't see you there. Sorry. Um, my name is Kenneth M. Stenger. You all know who I am. And uh, I won't take, it's not about voting, but it is about law. You have a decision from Judge Rosa, Minnows and Development in the town of Wappingers. Um, on the agenda tonight is a motion to authorize an appeal which I would assume you're going to adopt and take the appeal. I certainly would if I was in your shoes. It's not my position to advise you on that, but I do wish to talk to you about three things. Two things that you have to do, two things you can't do, and some things that we all might do to avoid further litigation here. So the first things that you have to do is you have to entertain applications under 24050. The law has been reinstated the appeal doesn't stop that. The court's decision says you have to entertain my client's application under 24050. I have a second client who by the end of this month will be making another application under 24050. Your board has to entertain that. You can't put it off. You can't ignore it. You can't, you have to do it. That's what the judge said. Now, if you win the appeal, all's for naught. But between now and then, that appeal doesn't stop you or, or, or give you the right to ignore these applications. In fact, the judge has ordered you to do otherwise. The judge has also said that you need to act on 24019B. You repealed 24050 because you said 24019B was an adequate substitute for it. My client's application has been pending under 24019B for the entire year, and despite letter after letter, it never gets on the agenda for a vote. Now, my client has an application in front of 2045, under 24050 as well as 24019B. The court didn't tell you how to vote on it. The court didn't say you have to grant the request. It just says you can't just put it in a black box and think it's going to go away because it's here. You have to do something with it. And I realize this board is going to be different in January. But the court's order makes a distinction on that. Now, there's two things you can't do. Well, actually, there's three things. You can do any of these things, three things. You can ignore the court's order. Then you can talk to Judge Rosa about that. Or you can attempt to repeal 24050 again. Or you can attempt to appeal 24019 but again, you'll be speaking to Judge Rosa because you really can't do that. Not with this history, not when the court calls out your, the conduct of this board in handling my client's 24019B as, quote, indicative of bad faith. I wouldn't want to make an attempt to repeal that, and I don't think you can do that, not without speaking to Judge Rosa. But there is something we can do. I. I'm a lawyer. I wind up in courtrooms because I wind up because people hire me to go in courtrooms when they no longer are able to talk to each other, or they no longer want to talk to each other, or most likely because they think that there's no need for further talking. That's when we wind up in court. And that's, that's a waste of time. It's a waste of money, particularly when you're dealing with issues such as the ones we're discussing here tonight. There is a thing that can be done. There is absolutely no reason why I can't sit down with members of that board, no more than two, and any town professional and your attorney to see what middle ground we can now reach after the court has made clear what the rules of the road are going to be for the foreseeable future. That doesn't stop you from prosecuting your appeal. It doesn't stop me from prosecuting my applications, but it just might save everybody a whole lot of money on lawyers in a courtroom because maybe something can come out of that conversation. And I've been asking for that conversation since we won this case. And I understand politics was involved in it. And I understand pride and I understand ego. But all of that needs to be set aside if you would like to attempt to avoid being in the courtroom. It means that you'd be willing to talk. Maybe nothing comes out of the conversation. 
but it's your choice whether to talk or not. I'm willing to talk. I'm willing to put the award of legal fees on the table. I'm even willing to talk about changing the name of the application from Joey Estates. I'm willing to talk about more substantive things than that. But I can't do it unless you wish to talk. And I'm asking for that opportunity. I think we should take that opportunity, even if it were to fail, all of, our, all of, our, all of the people in this room would be better off for having taken a shot at it. So thank you so much for uh, hearing me on this, and good luck on your vote. Thank you, Mr. Stegen. Bye. Okay. Any other public comments on any other item, agenda item? I make a motion to close the public hearing. Second. Motion second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Point of order. Uh, the public portion. Public portion. I'm sorry. <laughs> Wrong choice of words. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Motion second. You're all in attention. favor? Thank Aye. you. Aye. Aye. Any nays or abstentions? Seeing none, the motion that. passes. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Hey, you know, semantics. Uh, the uh, next item under the uh, amended agenda will be resolution 2023-160 on the town controller, Mr. Casella. Sure. So resolution 2023-160 is a resolution appointing the town controller. Now, therefore, be it resolved as follows. The town board hereby appoints Jessica Serradio to the office of town controller, beginning on January 2nd, 2024. Uh, town controller shall serve for a two-year term in accordance with town law. Town controller shall take and, and subscribe the oath of office as required by the provisions of town law, to number 25. Town human resources department shall file the paperwork necessary to effectuate the appointment with Dutchess County, Department of Human Resources and any other required agency. Compensation from the controller shall be at the salary of $130,000 and paid from budget line item, item number 1315.100A with three weeks vacation commencing at the start of her term. So if, I make a motion If, if I may just. Gotcha. As far as the salary, it's per annum. Yes, per annum. Per annum, and the start of the term would be? January 2nd. January 2nd. Yep. I'll, I mean, second. I'll second oh. the motion. Sorry. Motion second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any nays or abstentions? Seeing the motion pass. Uh, we're very fortunate, Jessica, to have you join us. You know, we're really looking forward to it, and you bring a wealth of experience, and uh, I think you'll do great things for the town of Waffinger. So thank you again. Thank you very much. You. Welcome aboard. Uh, next item, Kevin. It's all yours. Good evening. Thank you for this opportunity to address the board. I've given everybody a copy of what I'm talking about. Banners, the hometown heroes banners, thanks to the highway department for uninstalling 150 plus banners. They're also being stored in street by street groupings. And that, that those, all those groupings are labeled. And I really do appreciate that. The display in the meeting room is underway 16 at a time for about 10 days each. Next order of nine banners is expected this week, and I expect to put them up uh, rather soon. 5K walk run. I was contacted by Gail hey, Sherry. Kevin, just question to yes, sir. And the banners, do you plan to do what you did last year, display it yes, here? Yes, exactly, okay. exactly. I, I already had some up, and I, I took them down in That's anticipation fair. of being able to um, address the next batch, but uh, work got in the way. Sure. Um, the 5K walk run that we have in April. I was contacted by Gail Sherry, and um, our new she has one new race coordinator added to her company because they're they're on fire. They're they're really moving along. She didn't say, but uh, I intimated that the cost should be the same, about a thousand twenty-five dollars. And Easter is early this year. Easter is March 31. So we should be able to pick whatever weekend we want in April. Uh, does anybody have any ideas, given about five minutes uh, warning? Uh, okay. I would check with uh, Sue O'Neill just to make sure there's no other events going on on the rail trail. Right. Very good. Uh, there are Very a good. lot of events coming up. All right. Who can, who can do that checking? I would have Jessica Fulton touch base with uh, Sue O'Neill. Thank you. Um, fundraiser. We had talked about a fundraiser a lot earlier in the year. I'd like to address that again. And well, 
maybe at a later date, uh, because that would that's quite a conversation. And I'm trying to limit myself to four and a half minutes here. Uh, memorial pavers. Uh, I, I still need permission to build on the west side of that monument, the Etchlat House. I did have permission, and it's going nowhere. I have a contractor who's willing to do the work for free. I have the bricks were ordered. I what need, do you mean it's going nowhere? Nobody's uh, helping you on it? Uh, I don't have permission. Okay. Who do you need permission from? Yeah, what do you need permission uh, from? Well, it, is it up to me to outline the, the, uh, the shape of the rectangle? Is it up I to me to remove provide the... provide us with you a rough draft, you right. know, okay. and, uh, then we can uh, give you permission, basically. All right, I'll do that. All right, good. That's the first step. Thank you. Yeah, if you need uh, assistance with the actual work, let us know, because, yeah. I mean, we have a lot of Boy Scouts looking for community yeah. service. Yeah. All right, in fact, very good. Yeah, we have a couple that want to have some... Uh, Great. Activity, okay, uh, thank you. For their eagle skill. Yep. On the next page, Flag Day, which is Friday, 14 June. I uh, would like permission to fashion another pit, another pit, similar to the one we did this year. I uh, wonder if there are uh, different ideas. We could do it at the town hall instead of Schlatt House. I would like to consider somehow a permanent fire pit. I mean, my personal opinion is, you know, and that is that Schlott House is a better location, whether or not the board and the new supervisor would have a different choice. I think Town Hall, it's too small, too limited. There's too much woods and around here, and, you know, we, but I think, you know, you should come up with a list and work with the board and with the uh, okay. new supervisor on what might be some good locations. Well, yeah. come up with the pros and the yeah. cons. Okay. both locations and right. present it to the board. I think Slide House, she did a nice job. It's a nice yeah. video out there, so it was, it was very, very nice what she did yeah. for Flag Day. Yeah. So, right, very right. much. Yeah, well, I think you got you, a lot of Chris in there, but other than that, the video was pretty good. That was the best one. If you're, <laughs> if you're uh, uh, properly, ceremonially um, uh, burning flags, right, um, I think you want to be in an area that's open just like you were okay. last time. Okay, uh, okay. Because some yeah. of these are not cotton. And right. whether you want, exactly. you know, right? Well, you burn shoes. According to um, uh, Howie Prober, uh, using cinder blocks, cement blocks, in a hole that's about three or four feet deep is yeah. satisfactory. He didn't think that there, were, there would be a problem. However, we do have a problem with a location at Schlatt House. Um, I was, or I've been under the impression that we were going to do something with Schlatt House that would preclude that fire pit being there. But if we can do that, I would like to move forward on that. Well, I think some other study and proposals, like I said, you know, after the first of the year, since okay. we're getting to it, then right. you can work with the, the team and of course. Uh, sure. come up with something. Okay. We'll make it work. Um, I'll move to the last item because the other ones will involve a little bit more time. Donor signs from the 5K. Now, last April, I was late in providing about 14 or 15 signs, so I put them up at Corner Fall. And um, I would hope that some of the sponsors saw those signs. I would like to propose putting up those signs at some of our functions. Because they are local uh, business owners, and I think they deserve to be recognized throughout the year and not just on the rail trail. Um, that's uh, obviously something to be developed, but I would like to consider with, with the new board uh, doing that at Corner Fall and you know, putting out uh, probably 25 signs. So it's just something to think about. Okay. okay. And that's all I've got. Okay. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Anything yeah. else? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Thank you. So thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Okay, next item for discussion is the uh, Recycle Center items of Barco Joe. Okay, so this time of year, this time of year, a lot of people come and want to use the Recycle Center, but can't, don't want to pay for the whole year for two weeks, because the new year starts in January. So we've historically put them on sale in mid-December. There's two weeks left in the year, they get the whole next year. So every year we should really kind of review the the fees which you have in front of you. So let's begin that discussion for as item one. How do you guys feel about 
the fees for next year, leave them the same, raise them to try to recover some of the loss that we have there every year. So I think one of the things that you know we talked about a little bit, Joe, is we're, we're pretty good with uh, recycling fees, at least on page number one here, with the exception of the uh, annual senior. Uh, we've had it at $45 the last couple of years, so 22, 23. I think we want to continue in 2024 to keep it flat as well. Again, people are on a, a fixed income with inflation and everything else. Uh, we want to try to keep uh, the price equivalent to what we had before. So I know your recommendation was to go to 50, but I think talking with some of the other board members, I would we like to keep, keep it at 45. 45. And I think that's the only change we had from our recycle center, annual under 60, single use alternative vehicle and Freon. Um, from page two, I think Mr. Phillips would uh, I think make one, of the, one of the issues as you go there, as you know, we've had this discussion, is the limited on the trailers. Um, like my suggestion is to, and I've had this conversation with Michael, is to refuse commercial vehicles. Just they know who the right. They, they know. No, they know who the vendors are who are abusing this, and just refuse them. And I would say revoke their pass if that's what they're going to do. Uh, there should be no commercial whatsoever. Three, three of the board members up here go to the recycling center using a trailer. And, yeah. I mean, I don't have a truck, so I, I use I a don't either. single trailer to go over there. So, I, so we're good on the fees except for the senior, which stays at 45. Correct. Correct. All right. Uh, as far as commercial vehicles, there's no commercial vehicles. No. Okay. No. And then the single axle? One is we... And that's a good segue to some of the problems we have. It's not on the registration, so if we t we tell them you cannot have a commercial vehicle, that they go to the center, and because we're we're collecting money on behalf of the highway department, Correct. there's a bit of a you know that's why this the I wrote the letter for Mike for mm -hmm. the trailers that he he says the problem down there is the trailers they're blocking up the traffic they back in it goes around outside. And it's blocking up the whole all the way out to the street. So he didn't want any more trailers, and he wanted to raise or raise it to fifty dollars. And you get to use you get five tickets, and then you get to use your five tickets, and you can't buy any more until next year. I don't agree with that. Right. I'm sorry. So we, it's not my. Uh, no, I understand I, that. Not, this is, um, I did and I on respect behalf of Mike. Mike to help him I, I have no problem with that. Mike. He does a great job for the town. But that I don't, I don't agree with that. So all. we did actually. I talked to Mike today, and I asked Mike about this because we had, and I talked to Councilman Phillips and then uh, Councilman uh, Patina and Councilman Beal um, individually. And uh, the idea was, we said, let's keep it as is today. We're not going to change it. So it's it's not, you know, five passes for fifty dollars. It's going to continue being right. that we have the, that we have today. And Mike was okay with that. Okay, so Mike is okay with that. So yep. the, how about double axle? Zero. We're not it's double axle. There's so, a lot so of dumping well, for. Well, refresh my memory. Right now, today, what is the policy for trailers today? Is you can dump as much as you want. Any size trailer, double axles, or five dollars more. But uh, you pretty much. Uh, and these guys saying this is the, the the severe abuse that they see down there. So so, when you say, um, is it? Is it per trip on the, the permit for trailers, or is no, it an annual year. permit? You get the whole year to dump as many times as possible. Right. So the annual permit it, for right now for trailers of any size is $25? For, for a single for axle, single 30, axle. For a, um, 30 for a double, 30 for a That's double. for a single use. No, that's for the whole year's worth of trailer use. OK, no, I'm sorry. I'm looking at this. Single so what if, use somebody, uh, what if somebody rents a U-Haul trailer? Then what? That would be an alternative vehicle pass, which we put in, which right. you guys put in last year, and uh, and, and that what is that uh, twenty dollars? So they get to do do one dump for twenty dollars to rent something from a Home Depot or it's from actually twenty five dollars for twenty twenty four is the proposal, so it right. was twenty. Right, but he was asking about last year. Do, do so, those vehicles have commercial plates? Uh, no well, trailer plates. Rentals will. It's a trailer plate that you. Yeah. No, yeah. but I mean so. So, because one of the questions was there was going to be a ban on commercial vehicles. So, to the extent right. that the box trucks or whatever from U-Haul. Well, I was asking commercial. about a U-Haul trailer, but box. I don't think we permit U-Haul no. box trucks, no. right? No, we do not. And uh, Mike also wanted to to refuse those box trucks and the box vans. 
the Mercedes type vans. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Transit vans. Right, but coming back to your question, the trailer that they own cannot be commercial. Right. They've already agreed no commercial vehicles. And if they are commercial, they get flagged. All right, so let's talk about the flagging. And this is why the scanners that, that were requested are in there, are the third item. Does Mike have the right to flag people for future use? When, when you say, abuse, what is flag? And there's a flag meaning ban, abuse uh -huh. repeatedly. Mike's guys have sent us the license plate. We put it in my access yeah. database. And I we thought we were doing that. You know, we had uh, discussed that before and authorized that, and he had a right. reader, well, so well, I. Just to reiterate, yeah. This, yeah. flagging now would be people who uh, have double mm. axle trailers yeah. to lie about it. And because double course. axle trailers are not allowed anymore, right? No. Yeah. yeah. Right? No, not double axle. Are we allowing, well, I'm using that as an example. So currently, they're allowed, correct? Currently, they're allowed. Right. 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 So, so the proposal is to ban them. Double axle. The correct. problem is, like you say, Bill, you have a double axle trailer. Yeah, you're I mean. You're taking the junk from your basement over there. We've got people coming who, who are doing demo work. Right. And they're coming in two or three times a day on Wednesday, two or right. three times a day on Saturday. Right. And they're, instead of using a commercial location, mm -hmm. they're using ours, which becomes abusive. Right. Right. And, and just for the record, I haven't done this, but I'm just putting it in my, if I was to take my DJ company trailer, right, right. take mm -hmm. all the DJ equipment out of it because I have to clean the garage out and bring it to the recycle center, I wouldn't be allowed to. That's correct. <laughs> so I, I'm not sure I support, you know, we're, we're putting restrictions on people that they want to use their own asset to move stuff, we're making it more difficult. What we need to focus on are the people that are doing sheetrock and drywall right. and dumping it into our dumpsters that are right. that are clearly doing contracting work. It's got to be better metrics than this. And, and yeah, as I was talking with Mike before, I mean, they, they know pretty much who are the professional right. contractors that and have been and, abusing And those the are, are being flagged at this time. Yes, they're and being you guys flagged. are good with that. Now, yes. how does, yes. how does a, uh, a flagged item uh, get an appeal? My suggestion, he'd come here for... He comes for, in front of the board. Mm -hmm. In front yeah. of the board. That, and, the, yeah. and the flagging, if I'm using the right word, that, that's a per year thing. In other words, that's in perpetuity, right? Yeah. It's not just... Uh, it that just could be up on. to the supervisor. Well, why don't we make it more go. simple? I mean, why don't we make it simple? If there's a list that exists today of right. people that are abusing our recycle center, bring it to the next meeting and we will discuss it on how to properly and legally approach the matter because I'm not so sure that we can just arbitrarily call people and say, well, hey, according to this list right here, uh, your license plate came up this many times. There needs to be a notice a, process. A, a process. Yeah, it can't just I agree. Be, uh, All right, so now you're telling me flagging is not valid. No, well, flagging. Well, when you say flagging, does that mean you're banning people yeah, at the gate? People. Well, I mean, I, there should be a written policy as to what const, you know, what qualifies a person to be banned. And then the question he had was, do they have the authority to do that at the gate, or yeah, do we have to have a policy here? Yeah. So, all right. All right. So, I mean, I don't want to get into any right. inadvertent discriminatory accusations right. because that's what could happen here if you say, "Oh, uh, you, you, I've I seen you here before." You Bill, know? and further to your point. The town owns that property, right? Right. Right. And the highway superintendent does manage it, but I Correct. think the town board is properly, right. you know, in a position to request, you know, some process and procedures that. Certainly. Also dealing with what Joe said, right, right. to appeal or however we yeah, however discuss that right. issue. And we've discussed, right. you know, we spent, uh, you know, hours and hours discussing this over the years, but I think we've seen the recycle center evolve uh, just based on the whole market out there for uh, the lack of market for recyclables and the expense of getting rid of bulk uh, refuse has changed, right. you know, considerably. So I think we need to revisit the process and as a town board, we need to have a mechanism by which, okay, it's been brought to our attention that there's people uh, that are coming up in the scanner multiple times, you know, and how do we address that in a fair and equitable way without inadvertently uh, being accusatory. That's all. Right. So what do we do? Are we allowed to ban people for future use or not? And if we and if I get it, uh, if we get a license plate from the recycle center, 
and they say this guy has been abusing this, flag him for next year or this year. I think, I think with respect to, I, I think personally, the reorganization meeting uh, should include uh, a proposed policy uh, to identify those that are abusing the recycle center and a process by which they will be uh, banned. So how do we move forward so for the next two and a half, three weeks? We can sell tickets. He can sell tickets. Thank you. Sure. So you want to prevent them from buying permits too, is that what you're saying? That's exactly, exactly. what flagging is. All right, well, yeah, no, flagging you told, okay, I was taking it as if the person at the gate saying, okay, you're flagged and you can't come in. Right, that's because, because it's commercial or it's a double axle or they don't have a pass, but they send us a license plate. Yeah. We put right. it in the access database. When they go to call it up, it says, sorry, you've been, you've been banned from this recycle center. If that's not... What defines, you guys didn't find, right, but what, what defines that? What, what says? Mike says it's that. Michael and the people that are manning the gate when they make right. that decision. Yes. And these yeah. guys feel the abuse. No, I, I understand that. I just think that it needs to be a town board uh, decision, and the, the process needs to be a policy and not one individual making the determination. That's just my So position. why can't we get a proposal from Mike, bring it forward to the board, right, and we'll make the decision at that point in time, and the reorg meeting is perfect to do it. But I think right now we should be able to move forward with the fines that we have discussed. So are we good with the rates? That's yeah. what I mean. Yes. The rates, yeah, I think the we're all good with the rates. Verbally you know, what it is. no commercial usage? Yeah, I think, I think we're good with the rates. We're not making right. any major changes to the rates. Right. But I think we need to make it clear that people that are purchasing permits that moving forward, right. uh, we're going to be more proactive with yes. respect to who is uh, – utilizing this for commercial purposes, it's not going to be tolerated. No. And the only way that happens is they let us know with their license plate. Right. right. And Correct. they send us a text or an email, and then we flag whatever you want, word you want to use. Right. Yeah, yeah. I hear you. you identify but, them. And again, I, I believe, you know, it's the process and procedure. I think that, you know, and we, we all have talked with Mike, is the right thing to do because there has been tremendous abuse out there. Right, right. and you can sense my frustration. You no, know, I agree. It gets bad this time of the year. We get at least Correct. 15 yeah. people a yeah. day coming in saying, why aren't they on sale? Uh, who do I talk to about this? Uh, why am I flagged? You remember the fellow that I, what did I say to him? Uh, you might want to work on your attitude, and he gave me, you remember that fellow. Yes. So, uh, and he blew up at me. Well, we know your level of customer service is second to none. Thank you, William. <laughs> so moving right along, we're okay with All the All right, so you're rates. good now with everything? Okay, you're no, no, questions? No, no, the, the scanner, the scanner. Joe, just one question on, commer Hold on. commercial you, vehicles are already banned, correct? Isn't that yes. the policy? Well, yeah, I was affirming it. But if Ken, we don't know if it's commercial because it's not on the registration. Right. To that, I have a question. So you have a homeowner who has a commercial pickup truck, and he wants to take his trash from his garage much to what Mr. Not only that, a van. If you have a van that doesn't have a window on the back and it's registered as commercial. Correct. Mm -hmm. But he's not dumping commercially. It does. I mean, again, that's the policy. You, the, you know, know. I mean, that's, the, that's an easier policy to enforce than right. going through and picking out is the drywall commercially related or is it right. home related? Home is residential. I mean, so yeah. we have a transfer station um, and, you know, it's, it's technically not for commercial purposes it's only for Correct. you know household Homeowners. trash and you know trash you know d debris or whatever you want to call it generated by homeowners household so. trash yes right. and certain bulk refuse depending Correct. on what yes. what is defined yeah okay all right so coming back to commercial it's not on the registration they get to the gate the guy at the gate sees that it's commercial. They send us the, the license plate, and then they get banned and flagged. All right? But when they come to us, how are we supposed to know if it's commercial or not? And they only that you're, you're relying. You're, you're not going to know. The highway department. I think. I think upon the sale of each permit, there needs to be uh, a piece of documentation that says in 2024. Uh, uh, Again, there's this. This is not for commercial use, and this will be enforced. Um, we reserve the right to uh, revoke your permit. And, if, and future use. Okay. Correct. Refund? I would say at this point, put that. Uh, you Refund? Know, I, I would say no. I mean, no. We, you're not going to give him 40 no. bucks back or whatever. But no. the point is, have Jim craft something that's simple that each permit is sold, and then we can adopt a policy at the reorg that develops a mechanism on how to do that. 
All right, yeah. so then given that, then they've been, they, they've been uh, flagged. I hate using that word. So the scanners that are the next item yes. are the only ones that have a record of those so that when they scan them, see, I do a live, a live from Mikey. You do. And when they scan You're them, it pops up on their little screen there and says, this guy's been... been yeah, I have no, I have no objection the, with that. And it gives the, the reason why. Well, that's because right. you came in with all this brush. You didn't have a trailer. Right. Even so you need approval of $2,096.41 so for the scan. Well, it's Mike's in does. Mike's budget. Well, wait a minute. Who, it's in who's paying budget. for it? Mike. 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 Who's paying for okay. it? Okay. But it's in my budget as well. So the only reason why it's here, if we're not going to be able to do the flagging and all that, then... Then, uh, then don't buy. It. Then you don't I need won't it. buy. It. I got it. I mean, the only reason why it's on there is because of the voucher thing that needs to be. You know. uh, no, no objection to that. Okay, me neither. So, right, so I have a whole host approve? of other items. I don't oh, think geez. you want to hear them now, do you? Go yeah. ahead, Joe. All right, we'll give you a shot. <laughs> the box trucks and vans. We already established no box trucks and vans, right? The right. Yes. Van. All right, we're good there. The the license. They have a license, but the vehicle doesn't match because, oh, we got a new vehicle. But we don't know whether that's the son's vehicle from the town of Poughkeepsie or, or what have you. And then uh, that's what we're finding. A lot of people, are they're not mad. You should go up there on a Wednesday and Saturday and see what's going on. But um, so. So the permit, and, and refresh my memory, the permit used to be required to be points. affixed to the bumper. Then we changed it to the door jam. What's the policy now? The, the point is, is that the registration doesn't match their address for a number of reasons. They didn't get a new one yet. Uh, what I'm asking is if the registration doesn't have the address of the Wappinger Street that's on there, which is all coded in the database, comes right up when you scan, do, do, can we just deny them and then if they want to appeal, they can come to you? Is that I, I, don't, I don't know if that's necessary. I mean, what if I have to borrow a vehicle to move stuff to the recycle center? I mean, Because I, a lot of people are doing that. They're borrowing their neighbor. Yeah, I, I don't know. This, you know, we got to so sit down and we got to sit down in a workshop us, and do see. this because I feel like every five years we go this, through this. This is a yeah. good thing for so, our workshop. So why don't we just move forward with what we've approved already tonight and these other things? They have to be entertained at a, a later time. It's, it's doing. Work. I mean, we'll be here all night. There's so many what ifs on this. Yeah, well, so many different caveats world. and everything else. Let's, I mean, we have a long agenda here. Yeah. Let's, 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 keep let's it just moving. do the rates. All right. So where do we send these people if they're mad? See, Bill. <laughs> you got the bill or the their respective council person. Right. Yes. You got it. Right, Can't wait to get these calls. <laughs> okay, thank you. Yeah. I heard they're all ward one. <laughs> they're not all out of ward one, by the way, I'm just saying. <laughs> hey, what ward are you in? Oh, ward one. <laughs> we appreciate your hard work. Thank you for your thank service. You, Jack. <laughs> thank you, Lori. <Laurie. laughs> are we done with this? Yes. So we have to move this, right? No, no, no. Oh, we're not doing, we don't have to move this. No, no. Well, you so probably you, should you, do you have anything that. else? You should probably move it to amend okay. the fees. Yeah, to amend the fees, we need, should have right. a motion. Right. So okay we with the rates. We're, we're going to... Okay. We need to change one rate, correct? Yes. So we got to change, change two things on it. So you go ahead. Change. Make, make the motion so we can at least amend the rates. All right. So I make a motion that we amend the rate for the recycling center annual senior to $45 versus 50 and we also said we're going to change the single axle less than eight foot to unlimited, exactly as it was before. The single axle what? Single, fa single axle less than eight feet. Oh, okay. That's, on, we, you, that's on your list here. That was just what Mike had suggested. Yeah. So basically, you're not changing anything. Correct. Correct. So there's no need for voting something you're not changing. Right, but he is, right. we are changing the, uh, they're changing the, the recycle center annual senior from 50 to 45. Yeah, there's 45 now. It's been 45. Right. But, but the you propose know. was 50. I see what he's saying. So, yeah. So we don't have to do anything. You're right. That was Fine. the proposal, and that's not going to happen. Right. Good point. Thank you, Tom. No, 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 no. So that's not correct. You changed the annual under 60 to $80, so you did change it. Oh, okay, 85. No, 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 no. It's 75. It stays 75. Oh, okay, it says 80 on here. It says 80 on here. It says proposed. Right, right. It's status quo. We're status quo. We're just keeping everything the Okay, way if it we was. keep everything the same, then that's fine. It says proposed at the top of the column. Sure. So we're going to keep it at 75. Keep everything at the 2 As three is. Rate. Okay. I'm glad right. we had this discussion. We're holding our rates. <laughs> Thank you, Joe. But we'll seriously, we will get together and develop a, we need a, a, a policy and procedure, Jim. Workshop. 
which we so can. So we're going to need the uh, we have one at some point. transfer but... money for these scanners, no? Oh, you're saying you don't need it now? We don't need it. It's in our budget. Just no. Um, it's just not part of the voucher. There's something different we have to do for Mike later on. Yeah, we got, We've got the 11,000 transfer. We'll do that later. Okay. So how you got well, we can, um, Yeah, he can spend that money out of his bu out, out of his, his DB. Budget. Yeah. It's so. a free, it's a, well, no, no, no. This is, this is for something. This is no, I'm talking about the $2,000. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the scanner would be probably, it should be out of the recycle. Well, which I believe is an A fund yeah. sense. It's an A fund. Do you add this to it? Yeah, I had that too. Do we know if there's money in that fund? I don't know. Right. Then we transfer. Okay. Yeah. Right? Okay. The money is there. So we're gonna Make sure it's charged to the right account. We're going to add 20000 to this. Well, yeah, let's just add that. Have a resolution that does it. It's only 136232. Okay. Okay. Keep them separate. Okay. Nope. Moving on, resolution 2023-154, resolution authorizing a memorandum of agreement with Teamsters Union Local 445 for deputy clerk's compensation. I want to move the table, this one. Well, I, mean, I just want to let you know that the, uh, the union, Mike Pitt, has received, has ordered it and gave you the latest copy, yeah. although he hasn't signed over the copy with his signature on it. Okay, so, so a motion to the table. This again, so I'll yeah. second at the table. Okay, motion yeah. table and second all in favor. Aye. 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 Any nays or abstentions? Seeing none. Take um, it to the next meeting. No, we'll probably just dis, you know discuss this during executive session. So right now it's table because we have some legal issues that we need to get some advice on. Okay, resolution 2023-155, resolution authorizing payment of attorneys' fees pursuant to town rules. So this this current one for uh, 155, uh, the wording has to be changed on it. Um, it can I can I can I finish please? Can I finish please? Yes, you So what's in the what's in the file here today? The words are not correct. You gave us the revised one. You put it on the dais, but if you take a look at the one that's in the package here, it's not correct. That's what I'm talking about. So you want a table? So we can move it. Uh, but you got to withdraw the one that's in the package today and replace it with the one he put on the dais tonight. And if everybody's willing to do that, it's still the same dollar amount, but it's different wording on it. I want to move to executive session. I have a legal question. Okay. So move the table. Second. 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 Okay. All in favor? Aye. Uh, uh, any nays or abstentions? Seeing none, the motion passes. A resolution 2023-156, uh, resolution authorizing agreement with Camel Pollution Control, Inc. for management, supervision, operation, and maintenance of the Town of Wappinger Water and Wastewater Treatment Facilities and Systems. I've reviewed this with you know, Mike, and he's discussed that it's consistent with uh, the past contract, no major changes, and his budget that's been proposed. I um, I'll second it. Motion and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any nays or abstentions? Seeing none, the motion passes. The next item is resolution authorizing the filing and perfecting of appeal in the matter of the application of Mid Hudson Development Corporation and Mid Hudson Holdings LLC versus the Town of Wappinger and the Town of Wappinger uh, the, and of Wappinger Town uh, Board. I, I do have some legal issues I want to discuss in executive session. Move to table for executive second. session. Second. Motion and second to table in executive session. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any nays or abstentions? Seeing none, the motion passes. Resolution 2023-158, resolution authorizing the right-of-way licensing agreement with Verizon Wireless of the East LP for utility pole installation. Uh, I have some significant legal issues with respect to the proposed agreement, especially since it's inconsistent with the planning board decision. Uh, okay. And uh, so I think it's appropriate to table it for executive session. I'll move it. Second. Motion and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any nays or abstentions? Seeing none, the motion you know, passes. Next item is resolution authorizing revised water tenancy agreement for, WAP, for Nature Preserve Homeowners Association, Inc. I did not see some issues that we had discussed uh, previously. Well, well, the other thing, too, is details. Yeah. yeah. There's no details, no numbers. Right. Okay. I don't know how we can approve it. Jim, you know, including the, you know, the right of way, you know, our ability to get access to the property and so okay, forth. So, we'll so let's table, table it in discussion in executive session. Okay, do I have a motion? I'll, I'll move it. Second. Okay, motion and second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any nays or abstentions? Table it. To table? Okay. Yeah. 
Uh, next item is resolution 2023-161, resolution authorizing the purchase of Shredder for Town Hall. Do we have any issues with this at all? Well, I mean, I'm, I'm concerned about the security uh, of it. You know, it's only a P4, you know, it's a cross-cut shredder, and it's not a... Do we need a bigger shredder? It, well, it's, a, you know, not adequate, in my opinion, for security purposes. It's not a micro-cut, you know, which could creates mm -hmm. the confetti. Right. It's one that can be reconstructed with software when the cuts come out. It's a P4. Than the one we had. But can we return it and get a better one? Can you get a bigger Did one? Did you get three bids or quotes on it, Joe? I don't, I don't know. Should, can we consider getting a better one? Yeah, yes. Is, is there are bids. The one we had that broke, if some department used and some glue went in it, it blew out the, uh, the high voltage. I tried to prepare it. And it <coughs> so let's just order a new one. But if you don't want to order a new one, we pay about $1,100 for a professional shredder a year to do it and figure it would take us up to two years. But if you guys want to turn it, that's fine with me. You're going to need to replace the shredder. Then. No, understood. Yeah, you know, I'm. I don't question shredder. And right now, we also have. We pay fifty dollars or fifty cents a month for the company to come and pick up documents for shredding. You know, uh, so that's you know the Here. boxes that we have. Well, you do that. Yeah, we do that. Just the euro. No, for whatever, there's three boxes, I believe, that are done. I don't know about your bo office if they have it, but they come and pick it up in different, three different areas. Right, right. Well, we, that's $50, $50 year, a month. Yeah, well, that's the annual yeah, records exactly. retention issue. Do it for everybody for the town hall instead of yeah. hiring people. Well, well why, don't, don't, for $50, I'd use why don't we table that and just yeah. have more discussion? Yeah, I, yeah, I, I don't question the need for the... I'll send it back okay. So we'd save the thousand dollars a year. Yeah, I don't have a problem with saving the money. It's just really more the question of the yeah. That's one of the lower levels of you know security because it's just a cross cut rather than a micro cut. Well, we took the advice of fish kill. Yeah. Fish okay. Well, anyway, I'm more familiar with cyber security, all that Very stuff. Good. So. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, want to table? Uh, listen, I'm not uh, a connoisseur of shredders like you guys, so I'll follow your lead. Okay. <laughs> well, I, I said I'm not. A, I don't well, know. The, table. I don't know. Who, who yeah. wants I'll to? I'll table it. Okay. Good lord. Somebody second. Okay. I'll second. <laughs> Thank you. Motion and second. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. Any nays or abstentions? <laughs> seeing none. The motion passed. Resolution 2023-140. Resolution approving stipulation of settlement. Uh, as uh, I discussed at a previous meeting, I continue to have some uh, issues uh, with this you know, particular we, agreement. We can discuss. And we need executives. a table. We had comments tonight that uh, I think are also appropriate for consideration. So do I have a motion? I'll make a motion to table. Second. second. Okay, motion second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any nays or abstentions? Seeing none, the motion passed. So the next item is the acknowledgement of the correspondence log 2023-162. Move it. Move it. Uh, motion and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any days or abstentions? Seeing none, the motion passed. Since we have a long list of items, I'd uh, like to have a motion right now to go into executive session to discuss these tabled items. I make it. a motion mm -hmm. to go into executive session to oh, discuss second. these I make a, items. Um, do this transfer first? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. We've got for the highway department moving right. um, 11,000 plus the 20. 2062 from DB 5142-401 to DB 5130.4. 401, 401 DB. So it's another 401. The old one's left off. Oh, okay. Oh, one. What is it for? for it, they bought cameras for the vehicles, and they needed shelving for the new garage that we never okay. purchased, so plus these two new scanners. New scanners. Okay. That comes that should come out of a different budget line. Well, you could approve. Are, can we approve it and then just figure out the line? Yeah, because the scanners would come out of a fund. Okay. Yeah, we're going to do those next because yeah, let's get that all done before we go to executive. Yeah. yeah. So just to clarify on this, it's it's how much? Eleven thousand for the cameras and the 
for the yeah, scanners. So, so, called thir so called 13, 13, 13, Why don't we consider taking the scanner of 2000 and whatever that is off of that? So it's 11,000. So move just the 11,000. We'll do a separate motion for the uh, scanners. Yeah, and we have $19,000 left in the budget for it, so you have more than yeah. enough money to cover the 11 plus whatever else we need to do. So if you want to restate. 11,000 from DB 5142-401 to DB 5130-401. I know. That's yeah. we're just, yeah. we're all we're doing right now is the 11,000. So 11, I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll second that. That's a DB, that's a DB transfer. Correct. Right. So I'll second it. Okay. okay, motion second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any nays or abstentions? Seeing on the motion passed. Then I'll second. move the cost of the scanners, which is what? 2000 dollars right. $2,062. I'll move that that comes out of Joe Paoloni's budget. No, 96, isn't it? It's 96. 2096 41. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Let's take that out of town clerk A fund. You got the money. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Well, we have to. We'll get to that. To yeah, we'll get to just, that. I'm just doing this, this one right now. I'll second I'll, it. Okay. Motion, second, all in favor. Aye. 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 Any nays or all abstentions? Right. Seeing that, that takes care of that one. No, go ahead. Okay. Before you go to executive session, may I just make a thirty-second comment while the board is still okay? Here? Okay. Oh, jeez. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry. Thirty seconds. Right. You know, my name is uh, Barb Gutzler, mm -hmm. and for the last. Five and a half months I've had the privilege, I think it's five and a half months, whatever. You know I was never good at math. As serving as uh, Supervisor Thurston's confidential secretary, it's been an honor to be in this position. I want to thank you, first of all, Supervisor, for asking me to come back and giving me the privilege of serving the people of Wappinger one more time. And also to the town board, uh, I tried my best in this job to keep you informed of things that were going on in your districts, if people called, uh, if there were issues. So I tried to either get in touch with you with email, text, phone, and I just hope I did right by you. Uh, it's also part of the job. And uh, again, that was an honor to, uh, uh, to be here you know, one more time and to help out as best as I could. Uh, I do wanna say that working for Supervisor Thurston uh, was an education for me. We have a different take, perhaps, on our supervisory styles. But I will tell you, I've come to know a man uh, in a working capacity of somebody who is ethical, honest, not prone to hostility or obstruction or anything like that. He just wants to keep things in order and above board. And, um, you know, I know that he's leaving the town in good fiscal shape with very good plans, and I hope that they that you keep those plans in front of you and that nothing falls by the wayside because of you know, politics, personal ambition, photo ops, or anything like that. It's been great. Uh, I said many years ago, I'm not coming back here, and I hope this time I mean it, <laughs> okay? Well, thank but thank you. you again for this privilege, and I sure. wish you all the very best you. in your new term thank of you. office. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you Supervisor. Okay. Let, me, uh, let me just say one thing real quick, if I can. Uh, just to dovetail off of uh, former Supervisor Gutzler, uh, uh, you know, I've been here for more transitions than most uh, with respect to uh, administrations. And uh, in this town, uh, we have a tradition of uh, continuity of government, uh, continuing the tradition of ensuring that the taxpayers are in good hands. Uh, and. Uh, I'd like, personally just like to thank Supervisor Thurston for his six years of service to our town uh, and keeping us on track fiscally. Uh, greatly appreciate, uh, Dr. Thurston, your professionalism uh, in uh, navigating us through some challenges. Uh, although the meeting's not done yet and we have like 20 things in executive <laughs> session, so we still have some challenges to face here before the end of the year. But uh, personally, I just want to thank you for uh, your dedication uh, to the uh, uh, position and your leadership uh, uh, as other supervisors have come before you, including uh, your confidential secretary, who I also uh, had the privilege of sitting at this dais with. So I've said this uh, each time uh, from a personal uh, note uh, as there's been a change of power, and uh, I wanted to make sure I uh, took a moment to thank you and also want to thank Supervisor Gutzler for her insight and assistance because yes, I did appreciate the text messages, I did appreciate the emails, and uh, certainly as we move forward to a new administration, 
I'm sure that uh, Supervisor-elect Cavaccini, Cavaccini will continue to uh, uh, keep us uh, 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 abreast of what's happening in the town. So, you know, in this town, just like every town, uh, there are politics uh, before and after Election Day, but I do firmly believe uh, that uh, we do put the residents of this town uh, first, uh, despite uh, whatever election cycle we're in. So my thanks to Supervisor Thurston and former Supervisor Kutzler uh, for your service to our town as we come to the home stretch of 2023. Thank you. Thank you. Thank make a much. moment that we go into executive session. Okay, so we have so a motion. No? Second, no, let's come back to that. A motion for executive session, and this would be to get legal advice and counsel on resolutions 2023-154, 2023-155, 2023-156, 2023-159, and 2023-140. That said, there's a gentleman uh, that did approach uh, the dais here. Did you have a comment with respect to the agenda? Uh, I do. I apologize. At the outset of the meeting, this gentleman asked to be heard, and you said, oh, you're on the agenda. You need not speak at this time. So I took that as wait for your agenda item. Oh, okay. So we had an, earlier we did have a public portion that was uh, consistent with uh, items on the agenda. Did you have a comment about something on the agenda? Sure, I'm here for resolution 158, the Verizon Wireless Right-of-Way Agreement. Okay, so let me let me pause for a second because I don't know if there's a motion on the table yet here. Is there a motion? No, I had requested okay. a motion to All go right. in executive so session. As long as the town board doesn't have an objection uh, to hear the gentleman's right. comments, I, I certainly don't have an objection, so go ahead. No, I was just saying as I intend to wait until after executive session. I was under the impression if it was on the agenda, it was ready for approval, not that it was oh, okay. an objection. So, so. so you're... With respect to Verizon, we do have questions uh, that we have to discuss in uh, executive session with the attorney, but we will be back uh, to perhaps entertain that resolution if you want to stay. Very good. Yeah. Oh, not, okay. Not going to drive back to Albany if you're coming back out to continue business, but it seemed like oh some were wrapping up the meeting. Uh, uh, since, since you're here, and you're representing Verizon? Yes, I'm the attorney okay. for Verizon. So it's my understanding that the uh, planning board approved an application which consisted only of this drawing, right? You know, I mean, there's more documents, but what you propose is this monopole, you know, which would be a wooden pole that has this additional antenna at the top. Is that correct? This yes, is what I understand was the only thing that the planning board approved. And so that's where I have some issues with respect to legal issues, you know, but you're, you're saying that this, this design, I got this from the planning board file, right? Correct. This is what you're here for. Yes, Correct? it is, sir. Okay. The agreement that I thought that I that was online referenced just approval of that one single no. pole in the right of way. No, the agreement that we have is far different creature. That's what I need to get legal counsel's advice. So your intent is only for that one monopole, yeah. correct? Correct. I, I was under the impression we were getting one approved tonight. There was another yeah. one in front of the planning yeah. board that would require yeah. a separate vote of the town board. But, but the agreement doesn't talk about this per se. It talks about a lot more things and gives a carte blanche of authority to go do some things. And in fact, the resolution tonight references uh, a different size poll uh, than this that's been approved by the planning board. So that we need to discuss in legal you know, meeting. I need to get legal counsel's advice and counsel. But thank you for coming and thanks. But this is oh, right I'll you're talking about. Yeah, you. okay. So if we have some other questions, yeah. we can ask. Yeah, I mean, if we can, if we can articulate exactly what it's supposed to say tonight yeah. and uh, amend the uh, resolution so that uh, right it's it's exactly what it should be. Then I don't see why we can't approve that tonight. So if you can stick around. All right. Do we we pretty okay. much derailed the last five so, minutes. Sorry. So anyway, there's a motion executive session on the enumerated item. Okay. A second. All right. I'll move it. Okay. Motion. Second. second. All in second. favor? Aye. 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 Any nays or abstentions? Seeing none. The motion passes. Thank you. All right.